Hi, I'm the town heathen, and the older I get, the funnier thinking about Catholic Mass gets. So before the main event starts, as people filter into this giant decadent library that's obsessed with one book, you'll see the men genuflect that is kneel towards the altar. They don't kneel towards mountains or rivers or an aurora borealis or a plate full of bacon or any of the other more beautiful things that supposedly God has provided. No, they would rather kneel towards an altar of stone or wood and behind it a depiction of human sacrifice. How quaint. Then comes the karaoke act that signals the start of the parade, and this is the worst karaoke you've ever heard. It seems that all the tone-deaf people in the neighborhood go to your church, and they are the most confident singers in the room. The parade features a few men and some boys in dresses holding candles and throwing smoke in the faces of the people closest to them. The man in the prettiest dress is particularly amusing because he's not allowed to have sex. And of course, because of this, he's against condoms, because if he can't fuck, you gotta fuck less. Now you would think by this grand display and horrible cacophony that it was building up into a greater event, like it was the intro to a rock concert, but no, suddenly it takes a 180 and becomes one of the most boring business meetings ever with a rigid schedule. It's like going to one of those Japanese ones with the integrated calisthenics for terminally ill seniors. Slowly sit, stand, kneel, and occasionally grunt your tone-deaf mouth in some sort of other horrible sound. Then, after that knee-slapping good time, the man in the prettiest dress gets to go for 20 to 40 minutes to tell you all his twisted social and political views that are somehow justified by random verses in a book that was written 2,000 years ago that he can study better than you can. And then finally, the sign is a child I was always looking for, when they invited our whole family up for crackers and wine. And it's not because I like the crackers, or because they gave you enough wine to get drunk off of, but because this meant that there was only about 15 to 20 more minutes of this bullshit. It was boring when I was a kid, maybe hilarious to me now, but boring to me as a kid. Seriously. And I think this is why I quit the Boy Scouts. Ah, the Boy Scout Law. The Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful. Friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Ones that bother me in there? Obedient and reverent. Because it doesn't say to whom. Of course, the men who wrote this thought you would assume white old Christians. You see, Boy Scouts was sold to me in the form of a pamphlet. And in this pamphlet was canoeing, whitewater rafting, camping, archery and shooting guns and that was awesome and I asked my stepdad do you really get to do those things he goes yeah I got to do those things and then when you get into Boy Scouts you find out that's what you do kinda sorta part of the time and most of the time you attend meetings in uniform yes at your local drunks lodge you get to walk through the sticky carpet bar into the multi-purpose room with the fold-out tables so that you can go through another rigid schedule boring oh god the only time you might get a laugh is when a kid was unprepared for his presentation the best thing he could come up with in short notice was his sock puppet collection a few of which looked rather tired eventually i quit the boy scouts and probably because i already had to go to one mandatory boring business meeting on sundays so i wanted to drop the optional wednesday one especially because of the cute uniform the problem with any institution that focuses too much on the past is it has no chance of helping us in the future. Thanks.